Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, hope you are quite fine and attending the online classes regularly. I welcome you all to the online class lectures of Gurudwar College on behalf of Department of English. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I am Nazmus Saqib, Assistant Professor of English. Dear students, this class, my today's class, is specially designed for HSC first year students who are newly admitted. And this class will offer you a brief scope to know about the question pattern and the way you need to answer the questions in exam. Usually, this is my first class every year because the students, uh, when they are newcomers in the campus and they are introduced to a completely new syllabus, they need to know how to answer and what is the type and pattern of the question. So <clears throat> today I am giving you uh, a class on answering questions. My topic is answering questions. Let's get into our discussion. Uh, there are 11 questions you should know in English first paper you will have to answer 11 questions all together combining part A and part B. Today uh, I'm going to discuss only part A questions and in the next class I hope to discuss the part B questions. So all the questions, I mean those 11 questions are not included in my today's class. Let's see the question number one. Question number one is a MCQ, an MCQ question. And you will be given an extract, a short passage from your textbook and from the a reading of that passage or extract you will be asked to answer question number 1a and you will face there a b c d e five mcq question each question will have four answers so first of all you will uh, be asked to select the right answers and you need to write your answer on your script in the manner that we usually call the listing manner. The style is listing A, B, C, D, E. And this is the usually accepted format of answering this question 1A. So answering MCQ question requires a minute reading of the passage and understanding each word and sentences very clearly. So this is your first duty to go through the passage, to read the passage very attentively and understand the meaning and message of the passage so that you can easily identify the MCQ answers. The question two, let's go to question two. Sorry, uh, before two, there is another question, uh, uh, question number one B. This is uh, an open ended answering pattern. That means you will be given A, B, C, D, E, five questions, and these questions will require you to answer giving enough information, and you, you will be asked to answer the questions in sentence. That's why we call it open-ended question. So every question, each question here will have two marks. And it doesn't mean that you need to write an elaborate answer for two marks. You need to write four sentences, five sentences. You can if it requires, but First of all, you should keep it in your mind that make your answer to the point and try to give the relevant information, not 
the irrelevant issues and informations and it will secure your marks so <clears throat> next question is question number two question number two is a new item for you uh, as uh, as far as i know you uh, you the students who are newly admitted do not have any experience of answering question like this flowchart question number two is a flowchart a flowchart definitely will have a flow a chart in flow just look at the pattern there are six square boxes connected with arrow marks and these arrows actually are indicative of the flow and each box will require uh, please look at the pattern number one will be uh, given with answer read the question read the following text and make a flow chart showing the training Terescova had to undertake number one is done for you box number one will offer you the answer it means it will show you the pattern how to answer the rest five boxes how to give information into the rest five boxes so the other boxes two three four five six you, you will face you will find the boxes in your exam as blank boxes uh, but uh, here the boxes are given with some answers but in the exam uh, you will face the boxes blank and uh, you will be uh, required to give information in the boxes but what is the technique of writing this or, or answering this question this question is set with a view to uh, making you capable of using fragment sentences the sentences that are required to um, yeah, use uh, that are that are required to be employed in conversation or in day-to-day -day activities to make students enable to use fragment sentences this question is set here so the basic principle of answering this question is to write fragments in the box not complete sentences i am <coughs> giving uh, a bit em emphasize on this particular point because this is a usual mistakes this is a usual mistake by students often we find scripts with complete sentences full sentences in the box but these are not the right way to answer this question so keep it in your mind be careful to write fragment sentences fragments what are fragment sentences fragments are groups of words that uh, look like sentences but in some cases they may not be complete sentences uh, but they are given the status of a full sentence so a full sentence starts with uh, a capital letter and it ends with a full stop so you need to follow the same manner in writing the fragments in the box that's all about flowchart let's move to the next question question number three that is writing summary on poetry and prose usually we see that uh, uh, one or two stanzas are set in the exam to uh, write a summary for the students but uh, in syllabus uh, there is option there are options that uh, question paper may ask you to write summary on prose or extracts from the passage so uh, in this class i i i will try to discuss uh, how to write the summary of a poet a poetry of a poem or uh, the other way how to write the summary of a prose if it is a poem if it is a poem and if you are required to write a summary of a poem then 
you must maintain these five points in your writing. Follow these five basic principles or rules to write your summary. Number one is what is the message? It may it may be hope, despair, longing, fear, admiration, beauty, or etc. Just to find, just try to find the basic message of the uh, poem, and then keep it in your mind to elaborate uh, the basic point. But be careful not to elaborate, not uh, not to elaborate it in a, a, a widespread manner because. This is a summary and you must keep your summary uh, within uh, four to five sentences, not more than that. Number two is what meaning and feeling does the poem impart? Definitely, the poem will create a feeling in your mind and follow your feeling, follow your uh, emotion that will lead you to understand the poem better. Number three is, how is the poem structured? Every poem has a structure. Look at the structure. I mean, the stanzas. Poems are divided into stanzas. And each stanza has a certain number of lines or verses. Look at the structure and try to include the structural point in your summary. Number four is, what does the author use to bring us to his main point? How does the poet... Uh, uh, attracts, how does the poet attract our attention to the basic message of the poem? So uh, this, uh, th this is a very important point to uh, include in your summary. Number five is what is the overall tone of the poem? Every poem or every writing has a tone. It, it, it may be sad, it may be happy, it may be melancholic or any other uh, uh, emotional feeling our expression can be there. So you must not miss the point. You must not miss the tone of the poem. And if it is an extract, a prosaic writing, then how would you proceed? Number one is read through the text you need to summarize. I hope uh, you will do it, definitely. Number two, to, he <coughs> to help identify the most important content, Try to interpret the tone of the writing style. Tone is here again. Uh, that I already uh, have told you that uh, the tone may be sad, tone may be melancholic, happy one. Whatever it is, try to identify the tone. Number three is rereading the text and marking important points. Number them if required. Do it in the exam hall with your pencil and then you can erase the points. The number four is answer in a single sentence. What is this text about? This is just a mental mechanism, a mental process. Uh, be careful not to write this particular question on your script. What is this text about? Ask yourself, what is this text about? And answer uh, the question. And this is a mental process. The number five, draft the summary based on the previous two points, I mean three and four, you will have as a draft summary in your mind and then start writing. Number six is check your summary against the original text. Is there anything missing? There may be. If it is missing, try to include this particular point. <clears throat> so <laughs> this is the checklist. Uh, you need to um, Check your points uh, before taking down the summary in, uh, on your script. Ask yourself, does the summary contain only the essential message? If it is okay, then it is okay. Does the summary make sense on its own? Definitely. Uh, this is important because just think that a person who has never read the poem uh, if he starts reading your summary, he must be given the scope to understand the basic message of the poem. This is the point here. Number three, is the summary free of any additions to the original? Feel free to ask yourself and take care about this particular point. 
uh, is there anything additional to the original poem are there enough transitions to reveal the line of thought in the original text transition words are very important to make your writing smooth uh, to connect between the sentences be careful about using transitional words number 5 is is the summary free of needless words needless words are uh, like uh, needless facts so fatless writing is the basic theme here you need to make your summary quite fatless unnecessary words should be discarded so the next question we should move to is question number 4 question number 4 is a gap filling question and this is with clue this particular question is with clue you will be given uh, some clues some words in the boxes and then uh, you will be asked to fill the blanks with the given words but uh one thing is very important here you need to uh you need to make grammatical changes where it is necessary it's not like that in every points you will have to make some grammatical change but in some cases you will uh face the need to make grammatical change if if it requires do it and then fill the gaps with the uh right words <coughs> and uh, this uh, question uh, should be answered in this particular format uh, the listing format again mm, a b c d e and this is the ideal format to answer this question number 5 question number 5 is another filling um, and this is without clue it's unlike question number 4 where uh, you are given some clues some words but in this case there will be no clue you will be required to fill the blanks fill the gaps with uh, the right word the proper word and uh, students find it difficult to answer this question but if you have a clear idea uh, about your textbooks if you have a comprehensive uh, knowledge about the textbook then it becomes easier sometimes it may be said this particular question may be said unseen uh, it it doesn't matter actually because if you if you have the ability to understand the sentences uh, then it will be a uh, easy question for you to answer so don't worry about this particular question try to understand the sentences very clearly and then these sentences will lead you to the answers to the right words question number 6 is writing email email you know is a very important communication uh, instrument or vehicle in the modern era and we need to uh, know how we should write email uh, email should follow uh, a standard format by these two words standard format i mean the formats offered by gmail yahoo mail or hotmail and you know very well the, that these particular formats are used worldwide so we should take these formats as standard and the window uh, you need to use on your script should be like gmail or yahoo or hotmail uh, but the problem is the problem is with our traditional guide books Uh, students usually follow the guide books and uh, unfortunately our guide books have mixed up all the formats and they have created a new one which is not in existence anywhere in the world this is a rather confusing and uh, you must avoid this type of confusion so um, stick to any standard format like gmail yahoo or hotmail and in your writing be concise and to the point uh, to the point because email is meant for uh, uh, precise writing uh, it's not like an informal letter where you will have pages after pages uh, so be uh, be concise and be to the point proper spelling grammar and punctuation is definitely an important point whatever you write you need to maintain these three things spelling grammar and punctuation so 
this is important here <clears throat> because uh, wrong spelling, wrong grammar, and wrong punctuation will make your writing uh, a below standard writing. Don't do that. Not writing in capitals. This is very important. Uh, uh, any message written in capital sounds uh, hyperbolic. Uh, uh, we must avoid this type of writing. We should write in sentence cases. Sentence case means the way we write usual sentences. Uh, the next point is avoiding long sentences. Don't use long sentences because the reader, just think about the reader of, uh, of your email. Uh, he or she may be a very busy person. So long sentences will bother your reader. Uh, don't do that. Write in short sentences. Better you can uh, if you use fragments here again. Fragments are very important here. Using active instead of passive voice. Passive voice will make your writing less appealing. Uh, you must not do that in your email. Try to write active sentences. It will make your writing appealing and it will make your reader of your email uh, comfortable with your writing. Taking care of abbreviations and emoticons. These are uh, important points in one sense. Abbreviations, uh, uh, in case of abbreviations, my suggestion is that you should avoid abbreviations in email if possible. And emoticons, this is a very, uh, this is a much debated area, uh, whether we should use emoticons or not. In practical life, in real life, when we write email to our friends, family members, we usually use emoticons. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a very modern feature introduced for writing email, whether we should use it or not. This is the question. My suggestion uh, is, uh, you you can you can use emoticons and I will talk about emoticons in the later slide. This is the uh, standard window as offered by Gmail. You know this is the Gmail window. Uh, you can use Gmail window. You can use Yahoo window, whatever you like. Uh, in Gmail window, just l look at the window. Uh, it it starts here, it starts here where uh, we see two and subject. These two points are set, two and subject. Uh, there is no from button, there is no date uh, button. Uh, you know, these are automated, uh, uh, automatically generated uh, uh, points that your reader will find uh, that the Mm, uh, source of the email and the date. It is a, these are automated, so you don't need to write the uh, uh, dates and uh, the from your address. This is unnecessary. Just two and subject. These two points is important. Try to maintain the uh, whole window completely. This send buttons, this formatting buttons, uh, and here at the right top corner, uh, see uh, that there is CC and BCC. These are two important buttons, but uh, usually we see in HEC question papers, uh, CC and BCC buttons uh, are not used. Uh, students are uh, not required to use these buttons. So uh, I'm not discussing in elaborate these two points. Let's move to the next slide. The, here, here you find the emoticons, sad, sad reactions, happy reactions, love reactions, angry reactions, there are so many emoticons. So the important question is whether we should use emoticons or not. In real life uh, emailing, we have computers in our hand and we can use any emoticon uh, if we like. And you know, this special feature is made and this special feature is widely used, used worldwide. So why not for you in exam? My suggestion is you can use emoticons. Now the question is that you don't have any computer in the exam hall. And then how can you use this particular feature? You can draw any emoticon with your pencil if you really feel that it is necessary to use. There is no problem in my opinion. 
but the question is uh, in uh, the cases where should we use and where should we not uh, here is the answer where to use where not in business or formal email uh, like uh, email to the principal to business organizations uh, in these cases you must not use any emoticon because emoticons are really informal things and you should not use be careful but in personal email like friends to parents you can yes you can use emoticon and there is no problem uh, <clears throat> the next question is rearrangement that is a question now uh, seven rearrangements uh, are actually a very a common item that you already have faced in your SSC syllabus and in rearrangement you will be given a jumbled paragraph 10 sentences uh, not in their sequences and you will be required to make a sequence of the sentences so that a reader can find a complete meaning and a reader can find uh, the paragraph as a whole paragraph but the answering technique uh, uh, needs to be discussed this is important just write the numbers in the box as i have shown here in the slide um, make a box one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and write the numbers of the sentences according to their order according to their sequence that will do you don't need to write the whole paragraph this is quite unnecessary uh, there is a confusion regarding this particular point. Students, uh, some students, uh, uh, they create the box, they set the numbers of the sentences, and then they write the whole paragraph, which is irrelevant, uh, uh, not actually needed here in the exam script. So a very simple format of answering is there. Just make the box, write the numbers of the sentences, then it is done. If it is correct, you will be given full marks. Uh, so don't worry about the pattern. <clears throat> so uh, that's all from uh, my corner for uh, today's class. And uh, hope uh, you will attend the next class. Uh, the next class, I hope to discuss part B questions. Uh, and these questions are also very important. Uh, if you have any question, if you feel any problem, you can make your comment uh, on our uh, department uh, Facebook page and uh, i'll try to answer uh, if you have any uh, further point to discuss you can call me over telephone you can contact me uh, in my department uh, thank you for attending today's class thank you very much